Just a little note before we get started, you can see that I opted to get the weld-in pipe and what that means is I just got this section of the pipe and I'm going to weld it into the factory exhaust rather than using a Y splitter which typically uses hose clamps. However, that being said, the Y splitter with hose clamps is far easier to do and it doesn't require a welder. This is what the Y splitter looks like. Okay, so the first step before you remove the exhaust from the car is to take this piece, go under the car, and just see where it fits best. Okay, so I'm sitting just behind the resonator here, and I'm checking out places where this splitter fits into place well. Once I find a place that I like, I'm going to take a sharpie and mark where it goes in. Alright, so I've decided I like how it fits here just before the muffler because it's got plenty of ground clearance and it's not going to bottom out and because it points down below anything that it could possibly melt. I took my sharpie and marked where it's going to go in so we can tell where to put it once we remove the exhaust from the car. So now we can remove this exhaust system from the car and if you're doing this on a BMW be sure to check out my video here because it likely applies to your car as well. Okay, so I've got the exhaust out here, and as you can see, here's our mark for the cutout. And I've just got the exhaust propped up with a jack stand here, so we can access this location better. So our cutout matches up right here, and I'm just going to complete my outlining of the cutout so we can make a nice accurate cut. Okay, so I finished the outline of the cut and everywhere highlighted here needs to be cut out and removed for the cutout itself to go into place here. So unfortunately I'm out of cutting discs for my air tool here. So unfortunately we'll be using the Dremel, but that's not the end of the world. It's just going to take a bit more time. I started making my cut here with the Dremel and it's not too bad, it just takes a little bit of time. And as you can see, I'm cutting a little bit inside the line because it's much easier to cut away more material than it is to put material back. Alright, so I'm finally done making this cut with the Dremel. It did take a little bit, it took probably 5-10 minutes, which isn't too bad. So now I'm going to fry it out with a flathead, like so. So there's the piece we cut out, and our cutout will go into place like so. However, I'll probably have to do some slight trimming before it fits nicely. So I'm just test fitting my cutout here, and you can see it fits pretty well along the seam here, but there's a bit of a gap at the end. So I'm just going to trim this a bit until it fits nicely, and then we're going to weld it up. Alright, so after a fair amount of trimming, I've got a fairly tight fit here that I'm happy with and I'm going to go ahead and weld it up. So I just tack welded it into place, now I'm going to lay some beads. So as you can see I've got this all welded up and I've also grinded it down and polished it a bit for paint because I'm going to be painting this with exhaust paint because I don't want these welds getting all rusty because they'll look bad. Alright so I just painted this with Rust-Oleum high heat 2000 degree exhaust paint. I'm going to go inside get some lunch and let this dry. It's been about an hour now. The paint is nice and dry to the touch, and this should do a good job of protecting the welds from rust. It's a little too early to install the electric valve because I'm not sure what orientation I want to bolt it on in. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the exhaust, then we can bolt on the electric valve, wire it up, and see what it sounds like. Alright, so we've got the exhaust reinstalled 
And I just wanted to say how happy I am with how this came out. It's directly in line with the factory exhaust and it practically looks like it should be there. I've got the valve here and I'm just going to check out different orientations and see which one fits best. So I think it fits pretty nicely like so. I'm going to go grab my bolts and we're going to bolt it into place. Alright, so we've got the electric cutout bolted in and now we need to power it. However, the power source they give us is a cigarette lighter plug for 12 volts, but I don't really want to run this into my cabin and have it plugged into the cigarette lighter. So here's my plan. So as you can see, this uh, tool compartment accessed right here in the trunk. And if I remove this liner, it'll expose the plastic, as you can see there. And right underneath that is basically where the electric cutout valve is. So we're right next to the battery, and I figured I'm just gonna drill a very small hole in this plastic and I'll be able to power my electric cutout right from the battery here as it's very close by. So I'm gonna remove this from the trunk here. Now I'm gonna pull out this liner here. Probably gonna drill the hole around here, run the wire right here under this carpet and right over to the battery. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chop off this 12 volt plug because we're not gonna need it anymore. Now I'm gonna strip this wire and we'll strip the positive and negative wires. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put these connectors on here because they'll be easiest to wire into the battery. So as you can see, I have the positive and negative leads hooked up and I thought before I drilled the hole in my trunk, I should probably test this out. So I'm going to hook this up to the valve uh, out and around the outside of the car and I'm just going to make sure that it's functioning properly. So I've got the power cable run outside the car and hooked up to the valve. So this is the moment of truth. I'm gonna go ahead on my remote here and click open. Look at that, sweet. And in case you're wondering, you actually don't have to hold it down, you can just tap it once and it goes ahead and closes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drill that hole down in the trunk here and run my wires through. So I drilled the hole and ran the wire through from the exhaust valve and it turns out since I placed my control box so close to the battery here, I actually don't even have to use the extension to uh, plug it in. They gave me this like 10 foot extension and I really don't need to use it. I'm going to run my control box under this carpet here, plug it in, I'll put the liner back into this trunk storage area and then secure this in place. Alright, so I plugged in the cutout to the control box and ran the wire under this carpet to the battery and I don't really want to drill into this liner here so it seems safe enough just to leave this dangling here hanging out. So I'm going to put the cover back over this, reinstall the battery cover, then we'll get to see what it sounds like. Alright, so I'm going to let it idle and then rev it with the valve closed and I'm going to do the same thing with the valve open. So as you heard, it's a bit louder, it's not overwhelming, but it does sound a lot more sporty and it has a much more deep throaty sound. So I hope you guys enjoyed the installation video of the electric valve cutout. Please leave a like below and subscribe if you've yet to do so. Thanks, see you next time on JD Cars.